Welcome to Lesson 2, The Stock Market, Analyze Data. Our objectives are to learn basic vocabulary of the stock market, to compute percent change in stock price over time, and to analyze trends in order to determine the average percent growth over time. We're going to start off by watching a quick video on the stock market. Welcome to Lesson 1 of the Wealthlift Beginning Stock Investing Series. What is stock investing? In this Wealthlift video lesson, you will learn what are stocks and why do they matter? Why do people invest in stocks? What do terms like closing price and market volume actually mean? What are stocks? Everyone seems to have some sort of idea about what stocks and shares are, but let's just clear with some of the terminology. A stock or share represents ownership in a piece of company. When you own a stock, you own a small piece of a much larger company. When you see stocks bought and sold on the stock market, you are watching people buying and selling their ownership shares in different companies. The stock price of a company is the current market price of a single stock in that company. Every minute, thousands and millions of these stocks are traded on a stock exchange, such as the New York Stock Exchange, NYSE, or the NASDAQ. Buyers put in a bid price, or a price they are willing to buy the stock for, while sellers put in an ask price, or a price they are willing to sell the stock for. The stock exchange brings these buyers and sellers together and settles the transaction all in a matter of milliseconds. When you're putting in buy and sell orders with a stockbroker, you'll be able to choose the minimum ask price for selling stocks or maximum bid price for buying stocks, so you only make the trades that you're comfortable with. What are some of the key terms? The number of stocks being traded over any period of time is known as market volume. Any unusually large increase in volume is a sign that people are currently trading the stock quite heavily based on news or information about a company. The market capitalization of a company represents the total value it offers to shareholders. You can calculate market capitalization by multiplying the current stock price of a company by the number of outstanding shares or the number of stocks that the company has issued. The market cap of a company tells you its size, and people invest in different sized companies based on their investing style. As a general rule, larger, more established companies have less volatility in their stock price, but also less room to grow, while smaller, newer companies have greater volatility, but greater potential price appreciation. The lowest and highest price that a stock has traded for in any particular day is known as its day range. The lowest and highest price a stock has traded for in the past year is known as its 52-week range. This range quickly gives you a picture of how much the stock price of a company has fluctuated in the past year. Why do people invest in stocks? So why do people invest in the stock market? Obviously, just like buying and selling any good that fluctuates in price, you can make money as the price of a stock rises, creating capital gains and allowing you to build your wealth. What differentiates stocks from other kinds of assets, cash, gold, etc., is that companies generate earnings. Companies provide goods and services and therefore generate profits, which means they continuously create income. Other income generating assets include real estate and bonds, which generate rent and interest respectively. These assets are contrasted with an asset like gold, which can maintain its real value over time and provide a safe haven against risks like inflation, but does not generate any income. Obviously, companies come out of risk in generating their profits, everything from guessing what consumers will want to buy to natural disasters to securing credit to finance their business. People who own stock in companies are therefore compensated for this risk in the form of much higher returns on their money as compared to safer assets like savings and government bonds. This is known as the risk premium. Taking a look at the chart below, we see the returns on an investment of $10,000 between 1964 
and 2010 in four different types of assets, stocks, treasury bonds, CD savings deposits, and gold. By 2010, an investment in stocks had turned into $714,925 as compared to $405,057 for gold, $220,619 for treasury bonds, and just $172,537 for a CD savings account. While bonds and savings generate some return and gold holds its value well over time, None of these other assets generate real earnings because none of these other assets actually generate profits from providing a good or service. Looking at the chart, we can see that paired to these other assets, stocks are more volatile, with significant swings both up and down over a period of months and years. These short-term swings are the reason even experienced investors continue to hold some of their wealth in assets other than stocks such as cash and gold, in order to preserve their wealth during times of stock volatility in what is known as diversification. However, even with such swings, experienced investors know that this short-term volatility is rewarded handsomely with much higher long-term returns. In the long run, inflation, or the general rise in the price of things, means that savings accounts and other safe assets make you poorer relative to what you can actually buy. The significant real returns you can make through investing in stocks are the reasons stocks are a crucial ingredient in anyone's long-term financial portfolio. After watching this video, you now realize that stocks are a good place to put your money to earn a great return. However, stocks aren't something to put your money into if you want to pull money out for something like buying a car in a short amount of time, maybe six months or a year. Due to the volatility, you might put in $1,000 towards a car, but when you pull it out in six months, it may only be worth $500. This wouldn't help you at all. So again, you need to use the stock market as some, some type of long-term investment, not thinking of the short run. We're going to examine some of that volatility in the examples that are coming up. Here's Google, and this shows the last price as of April 17th, and that's 2014, and you can see this down here at the bottom. Notice throughout the day, each day, there's quite a lot of volatility. Here's April 11th through April 14th, 15th, 16th. There's quite a bit of change all the way through April 17th. Notice how much it changed on April 15th, where the price started, where it went, and then how it finished. If you had gotten nervous and pulled your money out halfway through the day, you would have lost a substantial amount of money. Now notice this is really only about a six day span from start to finish. And notice that we end and start around the same price. So there's not much change. But let's go ahead and determine the percent change in price from open to close in just one day, April 17th. Notice if we look at the chart here, we have an open price of 548 and we have a day range of 531 to 549. Our closing price is then this 536. This is the last price of the day. This is our close price at the end of the day. And we want to compare this to our open price at the start of the day, knowing that we fluctuated quite a bit throughout the day. All right. So how do we calculate percent change? Well, percent change is also a ratio. The way we calculate percent change is that we take the change from beginning to end and we divide it by the original amount. In this example here, our change if we take 548.81 and we subtract 536, we get a change of $12.71 in just one day. So we opened at 548 and we went down to 536. So this is a negative change. Now what's our original amount? Our original amount is our open price. So 12.71 needs to be divided by 548.81 
to figure out our percent change. And we get 0 0.023. Now, if we were to change this to a percent, remember this is math, so we're working in the decimal form. We need to move the decimal up twice. So this represents a loss of 2.3% in one day. Not very good, depending upon how many shares that you purchased. But notice that one share is $536. So it would be difficult to purchase a lot of shares of Google unless you had quite a bit of money. Now let's look at the percent change in price from the high on April 14th to the low on April 15th. So assuming that you invested your money one day and sold it the next. Well the high on April 14th right here is about here. And it's hard to tell but maybe it's right in between 525 and 540. Right in the middle between those would be about $532. Now let's look at the low on April 15th. Well, that's down here. And if you'll notice, if this is 510, right in here, let's say, it looks like that low is right around 510. So we'll go ahead and call that 510. So again, we want to determine the percent change between the high of April 14th to the low of April 15th. Well, first we need to figure out our change. And it looks like our change is going to be a decrease of $22 and over our original amount. Well, our original amount is what we started with. Chronologically, that would be 532. So if we take 22 and divide it by 532, we get a percent decrease of 0.041, which changing that to a percentage is 4.1%. And that's a decrease, not a gain. So again, Google is a very profitable company. However, if you only analyze one day or a 24 hour time span, you, you might actually lose money. So again, you have to keep your money in for the long haul. Let's look at another example. Here we have Apple. AAPL is the name or acronym that is used on the stock exchange for Apple. Now, if you'll notice, we start here in 2009 and we cover about a five year period here to 2014. Notice that we have some ups and downs and some ups way up here. This is a pretty big up and then a very large downswing. But if you'll notice the trend, if you had invested five years ago until now, the trend would be that you would have earned money. As long as you didn't sell during these highs and lows, overall, you would still be earning money. But let's go ahead and determine the percent change in price from the open to the close over five years. Well, we know the close. We have this price here, last price, $524.94. And this was on April 17, 2014 is when I pulled this off. So let's look at our open five years ago. Our open was right about here at 120.50. Look at how much the stock price has grown in just five years. So we went from 120 to 524.94. So the difference is going to be a growth, a gain. Let's go ahead and calculate that. Now you can see the stock price grew $404.44. That's pretty good. So what is my percent growth? Well, we need to put it over our starting value, which is $120.50. And when we put that in the calculator, wow, we get a growth of 3.3 and I'll round to the tenths place. But remember, this is the decimal format. So in order to figure out what the percentage is, we still need to move the decimal up two spaces, one for the tens, one for the hundreds. And we get a 336% growth on our dollars. That's pretty good. If I had bought 100 shares, it would have grown by 336%. 
and we could calculate what those shares would be worth. In the next example, we will actually go ahead and calculate our investment. Let's look at another stock. This is Verizon. If you were to have purchased 100 shares of Verizon in 2010, what would your investment be worth in 2014? What would be your percent growth or perhaps decline? So we're really looking at a four year time period. Let's go ahead and find what we would have purchased our 100 shares of Verizon for in 2010. So we'll just assume that this line here represents 2010 and we'll just go from the beginning. So it looks like maybe around $32 per share. We're just doing a rough estimate based on this graph. And in 2014, if we call that right about here, that's almost 50, maybe about $48 per share. Okay, well, we can easily figure out if we would have bought stock at $32 per share and we would have bought 100 shares back in 2010, we would have spent $3,200. And then moving forward over time, our 100 shares would now be worth $48 in 2014, which means that our stock, the value of our stock that we owned in Verizon would now be worth $4,800. So what kind of growth is that? That's about $1,600. That's pretty good. So let's figure out what that percent growth is over a four year time period. To calculate that, we will take our change, which was a positive 1600, and we'll put that over our original starting amount. We started off with a value of 3200. If we divide those, we get 0.50 or 50% growth in just a four year time period. That's quite a bit. That's over 10% per year if we divide that by 10. Let's go ahead and look at another example. In this example, we're going to analyze trends in order to figure out what our growth is. So here we show the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And this is a measure of 30 blue chip stocks, very comfortable companies, companies that have the large cap that the video talked about, and it measures their value over time. In fact, over 35 years, as you can see, and you'll notice there's some huge volatility going on, some big swings, especially over here. So what I want to do is draw a trend line through my data, and I could draw it, I just want an average. So I can do something like this as long as I have the same number of values above as I do below. And this is pretty close. Now what we can do is we can calculate the slope of this line to determine what the average growth rate of the Dow Jones Industrial Average has been over the past 35 years. So let's go ahead and pick some points. Picking points on the line, we can go here, this would be an easy one, and we'll call that, just round it to zero, zero, and then let's pick this last point way up here, and that's around 735 years, so we'll call that 35, 700, and I'm rounding just a little bit. Now remember, to figure out slope, we would look at change in y over change in x. Well, our change in y is 700 minus 0, and our change in x is 35 minus 0, which gives us 700 over 35. Plugging that into the calculator, we get a percent change of about 20%. So, if you put your money in the stock market a long time ago, 35 years ago, or maybe your parents back in 1982, it would, on average, have grown about 20%, which is pretty good. The problem is people who put their money in when it's high and then take their money out when it's low. You have to be careful and you have to be able to stomach some of the highs and lows and invest for the long run. And that concludes our lesson today on the stock market and analyzing data. So at this point, you should understand some basic vocabulary surrounding the stock market. You should be able to calculate percent change and analyze trends to determine average percent growth.
given a graph. 